We want the truth, so watch Truth Wanted live Fridays at 7 p.m. Central. Visit tiny.cc slash yttw and call into the show at 512-991-9242 or connect to the show online at tiny.cc slash calltw. So you Love that song, Dave. Hello and welcome everyone to the Atheist Experience. Today's date is June 12th, 2022. I'm your host, Secular Rarity, and joining me today is one of the coolest MFers out there, Dave Warnock. How are you, man? Hey, man, I'm good. I'm good. Thank you for that. I appreciate that. At my age, I'll take that. Thank you. Well, I, I would say anybody out there listening would would absolutely agree that that is metaphysically, axiomatically, ontologically true. And I, I just don't Ooh. think there's an argument against it. So Those are a lot of big words. <laughs> they, they are, and I have no <laughs> idea what they mean. Uh, what I do know is that the Atheist Experience is a product of the Atheist Community of Austin, a 501c3 organization dedicated to the promotion of positive atheist culture and the separation of religion and government. So all good things that uh, I think both of us here can can agree with, man. So absolutely, absolutely. What, what uh, we could go back and forth some more, but I think we got a couple of cool calls um, over here. What are let's, you, let's jump what are you right thinking? In. Yeah, let's do it, man. You like, um, you like Sebastian? He's up there. It's a cool name too. Let's, let's talk to Sebastian to see what he has to say. Let's do it. Sebastian, he, him, you are a pro-life atheist, it sounds like. Uh, how are you doing? I'm doing good. How are you? Pretty good. Pretty good, hey. man. Yeah, we're excited to have you on. What uh, What do you want to talk about today? What What are your thoughts on this? Well, well, so um, I'm an atheist. I'd say I, I, I don't align with, let's say, um, most atheists, let's say, on social or economic issues. I'd say I'm more um conservative in my beliefs but i do you know there's some things that i'm more i would say liberal on but one of the issues that i disagree with a lot of my um atheist friends is abortion because um i used to be a former catholic so um i kind of maybe it's kind of something stuck into me but i just feel that um the argument for example that um, matt dillahunty talked about i think um in the earlier years i think 2014 i was watching his videos and um and him talking about, you know, abortion, that even um, like the, the right of life and the right of like personal bodily autonomy. And I think he makes a valid point where he talks about that, yes, that that's the body of the woman and the fetus is um, inside the woman. And, and, and is its own, in my opinion, its own separate life and has a uh, moral value. And, but the thing is where I disagree with uh, Matt on is that um where he says that oh that that therefore i don't have like a right to use somebody else's body and i think that but the thing is that an abortion it necessarily uh leads to the death of the fetus because it's not like an act of omission it's an act of commission like if you just let and so so um, so hang on just a second hang on just a second for me sebastian i just want to make sure i just want to make sure that i'm following along it sounds like what you're saying is whenever anybody uh, in particular makes the argument that we can't override the the rights of the individual that's carrying the fetus you're saying that the fetus has the exact same rights as that person just the entire pregnancy um yes i would, I would say um starting when it like has um a heart i would say i would say i consider that in my personal opinion that um, you... a fetus starts having the right to life at the heartbeat in my opinion okay so oh. Uh, and I, I think that that's, hang on, hang on just a second, hang on just a second, Sebastian, yeah. hang on just a second. So I think there's, I think there's some problems here. Um, and I'm definitely not a medical doctor. Please don't, please don't just take my advice on, on medicine, but there is a basic threshold of viability of the actual ability of an organism to sustain homeostasis. 
if that isn't capable, then the concept of calling it alive, definitely the legal understanding of personhood, those really have to come into question. And viability is not at six weeks. It just isn't. Mm -mm. And when it comes to when it comes to the medical side of it, an abortion doesn't have anything to do with the fetus being alive or not alive. It's literally just the termination of pregnancy. So that it, there, there's already some shaky grounds here. Do, do you kind of see where I'm coming from? I, I understand um, where it's coming from, but um, maybe maybe I can further my argument by saying this: that like, um, well, what what would be the difference between like, for example, me, um, like, because for example, I am I, I need, like right after I was born, I needed my mother to survive, right? I, I cannot. But you maintain her. homeostasis on a biological level. That's that's one of the biggest differences that people don't want to talk about because most of us are not medically trained. And when we're not medically trained, we, we aren't understanding what, why there is a contention about whether or not viruses are alive, right? We don't, we don't, we don't have that understanding. And if, if we're debating whether or not this organism is alive, then the rest of these other discussions down the road don't matter because the thing hasn't achieved the basic thing that it needs to, which is the ability to sustain itself on certain biological markers. Does okay. that make sense? So it's not you... the contention of, yeah. Okay. So it's yeah. Not, it's not the argument of, of um, of necessarily, um, oh, it can like you like dependency on another person. It's more about like the um biological homeostasis. So that's the point you're driving at. Yeah. If 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 what you're saying is that well a two month old baby isn't going to be able to go get a job and feed itself and pay social security, like yeah, but who cares? Like, why has that come into play when we haven't achieved a very basic minimum standard that all of us take for granted? Like, I'm not concerned about whether or not yeah. the the like the lipid layers on my body are just going to like disappear suddenly or anything. If that's where we are for a good period of time in pregnancy, if that's where the fetus exists, where just at any moment it could just all fall apart and does like 85% of the times naturally. Like if we haven't gotten past that yet, then we don't have to have all these other conversations. If you want to have a conversation about, you know, uh, eight and a half months pregnancy, you want to say like, hey, at 37 weeks rarity, I, I don't know, I have questions. Mm -hmm. Well, sure, fine. But then you've already agreed that essentially there should be no restriction on abortions all the way up until viability, which is like 20 something weeks, man. And that's, I think that is a pretty decent compromise for, for the vast majority of it. And then we leave open the later things specifically for the obviously problematic things to the life of the person carrying the fetus or, or at mm -hmm. that point, baby, right? I mean, but at that point, it's a delivery, medically speaking. It's no longer considered abortion just by the people that are even performing it. Okay. I understand. Let me, so, let me ask you something, Jonathan. Yeah. I mean, Seb Sebastian, let me ask you something. Sorry. Um, we, Cause we're talking about what, what you mentioned is there are two people with rights and we're talking about forcing a woman to give birth to something that she doesn't want yeah. for whatever reason, she doesn't want to give birth to this, to this fetus. Do you think um, along those lines that if, if it was medically shown that you could benefit, your life could be saved by using my kidney if I was to give you my kidney, your life would be saved. If that was shown to be true, and yet I chose not to give you my kidney for whatever reason, do you think that the law should force me to give you my kidney to save your life because it's oh, saving a life? Absolutely not. Oh, absolutely not. But the difference is that is that I I, be, I, I believe that that um there's a well there's a difference between a kidney and a fetus. Because a kidney it's, is an organ, while a fetus is a um, potential, or in my opinion, a human being. Well, but you're, it's potentially saving your life, though. It's the same concept of saving a life. You're saying that the fetus is potentially a life. Um, do you believe in birth control? Do you think women, sh women people should use birth control? Oh, no. I am, I am completely for birth control. This was even... When I was um, a Catholic, I think birth control should be. Um, <clears throat> well, then you're snuffing out with birth control. You're snuffing out potential lives. 
Yeah. And that that seems to go against what you said at the beginning, where you said that the entire time during pregnancy, this this thing, uh, fetus, clump of cells, whatever this this thing has the same rights the entire pregnancy. And that that seems to go against the concept of a handful of different, you know, uh, currently available, maybe not in the future available um, birth controls that we have on the market right now. Right. Like that definitely seems to go, go go against like plan B and and the mm -hmm. plan C type type um, pills and medication, right? Um, well, because the thing is plan B is I'm, I'm maybe I'm not educated if you can maybe educate because I'm learning these things here, which is great. But <laughs> um, but I, I believe from my understanding that plan B, it's usually um, uh, right after um, there's a zygote, at least a week or two, which I don't believe. Yeah. Um, is in my, I, I don't ascribe moral value like uh, to a, um, a zygote. Um, so then, after. so then that that kind of goes that kind of goes back to to the very beginning where we were talking about you know where that line is at which this thing has rights. Right. So now you've just said that hey, okay, like first first week, let's say first nine days, let's say it, it definitely doesn't have any rights, but from then on it absolutely does and i think i think you know we kind of agreed i i brought it up but i think we kind of agreed on this uh sebastian that you know by the time we're at 38 39 week yeah we definitely have to have that conversation about rights um but wh where where is that middle ground at what point does does the thing start having rights earlier you said again the whole freaking time and then you said well, you, I mean, you at least mark, marked out a heartbeat, which there's problems with that. Often yeah. the thing that the thing that's considered a heartbeat at six or seven weeks is not in any way, shape or form a heart like it, it just isn't. Um, there's a thing pulsating. Sure. But like, OK, that's not that's not that impressive to me. Mm -mm. Um, but so so where where do you think the rights exist for this this thing that is currently using the body of another individual? potentially against its will, like? Well, the thing is, is uh, as I said, it's the heart, maybe if, um, when, well, maybe I would say the, you said pulsating, but then if it's pulsing, then I'll say at least like a, a fully developed heart, because I think that that shows uh, um, a signs of life, that there's neurological, like a brain activity, or there's some, there's actually like a fully formed heart and it's being, I think those are like some, in my opinion, um, objective markers of life. So if, if just real quick and again believe me i am i am not medically trained i'm sure there are some wonderful people out there in the chats right now uh telling me how i'm getting all of this wrong and i should never be a doctor which is fine you know uh but uh if it were found sebastian if we could pull out the the medical studies and the research papers and all peer reviewed and checked boxes everywhere and it undeniably confirmed that that criteria that you just gave a fully form formed heart neurological activity that's actually working and connected and all that, that that doesn't happen until like 37 weeks. Would you say that you would be comfortable with, with ending the life of, of that fetus at 37 weeks? Like if, if that were the criteria alone, doesn't that still leave us on a bunch of shaky ground? Uh, yeah, you, you're, you're not wrong there. That's right. Cause that's yeah. pretty close to, I'd say. And I think, I think that's one of the biggest that's one of the biggest problems with this with this type of discussion when when an individual is crafting laws for people wherever the heck they are and somebody asks them well hey is the plan b an abortion and they go well i i, I just don't know well you just passed a law on it and and when other people are standing there arguing and saying well, well, this is, you know, this is where I think this thing is living or this is what I understand about uteruses and pregnancy and so forth. And then somebody says, well, yeah, what about this specific medical concern? And our responses are, oh, my gosh, I, I don't know anything about that. Mm -hmm. The only reason the only reason, Sebastian, that I know any of the stuff that I do about pregnancy is because I have a really good friend, student Dr. Ben who has told me about this and has has talked to me about this stuff from a medical understanding. Right. And and the nonprofits did a fantastic episode uh, not very long ago where it was all medical people talking about abortion. And I feel like 
when we go to those sources, the people that are actually knowledgeable, we come to find out that the law that was the law of the land for a very long time, it took a lot of that into account. It took a lot of that crap into account. Right. We, sh we shouldn't just be so comfortable with just waving all that away, especially if it will result in the deaths of many, many people that we all agree are people. I don't think there's a th single person out there saying if you're 30 years old with a uterus and you get pregnant, you're not a person anymore. And if they are, call the freaking show. The number's below. But uh, what, do you, what do you think, Sebastian? Maybe um, maybe some more stuff to, to go look back on? or Yeah. If, yeah. yeah, I'll be and, more than willing to actually watch that episode because maybe it yeah, yeah, comes from, um, you know, I appreciate you pointing out my flaws, which is that's what I'm here to do is to learn, so. Well, I appreciate your open-mindedness. Mm -hmm. I think, and and to Secular's point, many of the laws that are trying to be, that are on the books in some of these states that will become the law of the land if Roe v. Wade is overturned, which we fully expect to happen. Mm -hmm. these, lies are, these laws are basically going to prohibit abortions for time periods of pregnancy, bef pretty much before the woman even knows she's pregnant. And that's problematic to begin with. When by the time a woman finds out she's pregnant, it's already past a point where she could end that pregnancy if it's not something she thinks she's ready for. That's a big deal. And those are the issues at hand here. And so we could argue about when, it, when it's actually life and when it's not and those things. Again, we got to leave those to medical people who understand those things. But what we're looking at here are laws that are so outrageous that women who are, are going to be affected by those are going to be in danger. And we're forcing these women to carry a pregnancy out that they have no desire to do for reasons that are no, most of the time, w whether we realize it or not, they, they, you, why would we force a woman to bring a child into this world who doesn't feel like she's financially, um, emotionally mature enough or whatever reasons to, to give this child a good life? Because I guarantee you the people who are wanting to pass these abortion laws are not lining up to take care of those children. Uh -huh. And that's uh -huh. the problem. And so, Let's let the medical people sort out these issues that neither of us, none, neither of the three of us are equipped to handle. And the bottom line is we, we're, we've got to quit trying to allow, we, we've got to quit allowing these, these people to, to force women to do things they don't want to do. That's the problem. Yeah. Couldn't agree more, Dave, but Sebastian, uh, we're going to, we're going to move on in a second, but give us, give us a quick 30 second wrap up. Tell us your thoughts. I, I, I think it was a good call and, and we, we learned some stuff. We pushed back, but you know, we're, we're trying to progress a little here. So what do you think, man? Give us, give us a wrap up. Well, well no, I really, really appreciate it. I think you've, um, you know, I'm an open-minded person, you know, since becoming an atheist about, you know, three years ago. So um, I'm, you know, thank you for bringing up those arguments. I'll actually check out that nonprofit um, episode. So um, I'll look it up on YouTube. So I um, really appreciate it. Brought my mind and I'll, and I'll give it a second thought on my position. Thank you. That's, that's awesome, Sebastian. Thanks so much. We appreciate you. All right. All right. Well, that was a good way to start, Dave. I like that. Open-minded like open minded callers. What a, what a concept. There's nothing wrong with that. And I'll tell everybody out there, if you liked that call and other ones like it and you want to support us here, there are a good couple of ways you can support the Atheist Experience and the ACA. You can become a member of this wonderful channel for as little as 99 cents a month. All you got to do is click the join button below the video, and that'll give you access to super sweet chat emojis. Uh, the Atheist Experience, by the way, is just one of a handful of the awesome shows that the ACA puts on. So make sure to come hang out with us Thursdays, 7 p.m. Central uh, for sexual secu secular sexuality. Gosh, that's a tongue twister always. Yes, it is. Uh, Fridays, though, at 7 p.m., a little bit easier to pronounce, which, which is truth wanted. Uh, they are always having a great time over there. And then, of course, every Sunday at 1 p.m., Talk Heathen. And then the flagship show, I have been told, the flagship show of the ACA, the nonprofits, is on at 3 p.m. Central. So go check out all of those for sure. And of course, you can always support us on Patreon, tiny.cc slash Patreon AXP. Every little bit of support does really help out. Um, there's a lot of moving parts here for sure, and uh, we, we can always use that help. So. What do you think, Dave? We've got oh, a couple man. of calls. There's there's one screening that looks really good too, but but what do you, what do you like the most? We'll take it. 
Well, I just, there's so many juicy ones. Let's mm. go with, let's talk to George, um, how to discuss yeah. uh, young earth creationist. Yeah, we got George, he, him in Maryland. And uh, George, it sounds like you have a, a little bit of a contentious discussion on your hands uh, with a soon to be chemist, but a, a current young earth creationist. Is that right? That's right. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Thank yeah. you for having me, by the way. Um, yeah. So uh, to give you some context, uh, I have a girlfriend who is uh, considered what she would consider a non-denominational Christian from Virginia. Um, my girlfriend claims that the Bible is the infallible, inerrant, inspired word of God. She claims mm -hmm. that all the Bibles, no matter the translation and any small problems with the Bible, like word changes, do not change the overall message of the Bible. Um, which is that basically uh, God is love, merciful, and just. Um, I, so I started reading the Bible, um, specifically the English Standard Version and the New King James Version, because my girlfriend told me to read those ones, at least to start out. And I started reading Genesis, and I asked her about some things about it, and she claims that she takes a literal interpretation of it, and that the universe is 10,000 years old, and that the story of Noah and the Ark is true, uh, which places her, of course, as a young earth creationist and a biblical literalist. Um, a label that she actually dislikes. Um, when I ask her, she claims it's because the Bible says so. When I ask her how she uh, comes to believe this when she's like, you know, becoming an aspiring scientist and is studying chemistry, um, soon to be, um, how can she believe that the universe is 10,000 years old um, when science, particularly like radiometric dating, archaeology and physics, contradicts this? Um, and she claims that, you know, the Bible is true and that history proves that piece of the Bible, a biblical truth, can be backed up without engaging in the details because she says, um, I don't have a firm reading of the Bible and that science must be, if the science is wrong or if, if the science is in contradiction with like the story of Genesis, then science is wrong. Um, but, but it seems to me that she can't really back this up, but we haven't had a full discussion about this. And so, um, it's clear to me that at least from our conversations that she doesn't have a true understanding in biology and evolution. And as somebody who is a biochemist, like I, I can, I can clearly see that. And um, she attributes things like, um, you know, pregnancy and stuff and, and certain biological things to miracles or God. Um, something that, you know, I guess a lot of fundamentalist Christians say, but I wonder uh, for someone in my position, the position of discussing a topic and getting to the bottom of it in really an effort to entertain the possibility of changing one's belief as somebody who's open-minded, um, of trying to understand another's. Um, how do I appro approach a person like this who is a young earth creationist, who is studying really to become a chemist? Uh, I mean, she believes that Noah's flood was real and this contradicts yeah. all scientific evidence, right? Um, what can I do? Should I just start running? Dave, you've got Dave, you've got a little more experience uh, in this arena. What What do you think, man? Yeah. Uh, well, yeah. Um, how long you been How long you been dating this person? Um, how How committed are you? Uh, no, yeah, I, I ser seriously. Months now, but we're still learning about each other. You know. Yeah, that's a tough one. Because um, I mean, if you that if she holds to that position and you're completely in opposite you know, in an opposite worldview, that's going to be problematic, as you know. Uh -huh. um, but if she's just beginning to study the science and the physics and things, this is probably going to take care of itself. And not, not always, but most of the time, people educate themselves out of a literal view of the Bible because they realize it just can't be true. And it just doesn't make sense. So I would advocate taking a very patient approach and um, not arguing and not, you know, not trying to convince her, not proof texting, uh, you know, that back in the day we called those sword fights where one person used one verse and another threw another verse at them. And these were Christians sword fighting each other, arguing about their own views of what the Bible meant. Um, but I would, I would try, and this is something I've had a little bit more success with in talking, in talking with literal view. In fact, I had a conversation with a, with a, a friend a few weeks ago and he was trying to understand where I was coming from as a former evangelical and now an atheist and he was asking me about things I believed and didn't believe and and so I just I threw up I did bring up Noah's Ark to him and I said I, I, I basically used their own logic against him in other words he was believing that this was a true event that happened in history and I said okay let's let, let's let's give you that okay let's say this happened 
do you do you really want to serve and believe in a God who actually did this? You really want this to be true? Let's think about this a minute. You, you've got a God who says, "I regret that I made man." In other words, I made, I had, I had the full deck to play with. I had everything I, I could. I could make this game any way I wanted. I'm, I'm Milton Bradley. I can create the, the game any way I want to create it. And I put these two people in the Garden of Eden, and immediately they went astray. And shortly thereafter, a few chapters later in the in the beginning book of the of the Holy Bible, I realized that man, these people are out of control. I can think of no other way to fix this than to fucking kill them all. So I'm going to drown my whole creation except this one family who, let's see where that ended up. You know, Noah gets gets drunk and, and his daughters sleep with him, but let's just not even go there right now. Let's just do the whole ark story. So you're saying that this God could think of no other solution than to drown all of his creation, including babies, including pregnant women, so this God's really pro-life? Is that what you're saying? And so I kind of went down that road with him, and he kind of leaned back and said, oh, man, that's kind of a problem, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And so when you start pointing out the problems with this Bible being literally true, give them that. Say, okay, let's assume for a minute it is true. Do you really want it to be, though? Mm -hmm. And they kind of come out of that thinking, man, I kind of really don't want it to be true. And when you when you get them to realize that maybe it'd be better if it wasn't true, you kind of it, it kind of can be the first domino. And I know it was for me in my deconstruction when I started seeing that the Bible couldn't possibly be what I thought it was, and I saw the inconsistencies and contradictions and couldn't make excuses for them anymore. When I realized it was a man-made document, then that domino was the first one. And the rather the others fell rather quickly. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. It does. Thank you. Thank you for that. And I, I'd say George, um, again, just kind of touching on what what Dave said, you know, right at the beginning. There, there is the question of, you know, what what is your intention? I think in every interaction that we have, no matter what what the hell we're doing, we should always be asking ourselves that question. You know, who am I being right now? Why am I being that person? What 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 is my motivation for engaging here? Um, that being said, especially if somebody is is studying in in a field of of study as intense as biochemistry, right? Um, ask them, say something like, "Hey, would you use that same reasoning to prove something in the lab?" And and if you wouldn't, why why wouldn't you use that reasoning? Um, because if you're if you're going to have a different set of coming to truth when you're in the lab in a lab coat and then you have this totally different way to come to truth like all the other times for stuff like why what are you saying they're both equally valid because it doesn't seem like it right because you yeah. can take that lab coat stuff and you can go outside the lab and you can use it every single place you use this other thing this faith thing but for some reason, you can't bring that faith back into the lab because nobody will take it seriously. It kind of sounds like you're admitting that one isn't as good, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, see your, I see your point. Yeah, and, and again, I, I think... Oh, no, please, go ahead, please. No, no, thank you so much for that. I guess for me, um, when you asked me, or you didn't really ask, but um, I guess my intention, you know, as somebody who is, yeah. who is scientifically minded, I'm always... I'm always looking for the truth, you know, as whatever the truth can provide and truth, you know, to the best, I guess, empirical evidence or evidence that we can provide ourselves to a certain degree, you know, of uncertainty or the minimal amount of uncertainty we can have. Um, and so, yeah, so, you know, I guess, you know, I'm, I'm looking for the truth. Um, I used to be a Greek Orthodox Christian, um, but that never really uh, vibed with me. And uh, after reading Genesis, in Greek back in the day, it, it just it didn't make any sense to me. So engaging with people like this, I've actually engaged with a lot more young earth creationists than I ever thought existed, but clearly they're a huge, huge um, part of uh, American society. Yep. Um, mm -hmm. And so, yeah, I, uh, you know, I've been just trying to understand. It's troubling. For sure, for sure. And George, we, we appreciate you. We have 
Um, a couple of other really cool calls. Uh, by the way, George, I'll just I'll, I'll tell you this privately. Nobody else will hear us. It's just you and me right now. Um, you know, there is a fan run Facebook page uh, that houses some really, really wonderful people. And these are some great places to, to throw that type of question out, um, because there are a lot of people out there that have had experiences in this kind of ballpark, some good, some bad. Um, but I think the more we engage with each other in that manner, the more we're going to come to right answers. So, Sure, sure. Yeah, well, thank you. Thank you so much for your time. You bet. Good yeah, luck with thanks everything. Thanks so much. All right. All right. That wasn't oh. bad either. What do you think? So uh, many juicy calls here, man. I know. You think we can get through one more before? Well, hang on. Since I kind of brought it up, let me do it quick. <laughs> Folks, do you know that there's a channel out there that houses all of the shows for the ACA in audio podcast form? That's right. You won't get to see Dave and my beautiful faces, but tiny.cc slash AEN podcast. You can listen to all the latest shows from the atheist experience, talk heathen, truth wanted, secular sexuality, nonprofits, and all the others. And like I just mentioned, I don't know. I, I'm sorry you all it got turned off the audio for a second there, but I'll tell you. Uh, there are three Facebook groups that are run by the fans and for the fans to come and hang out and interact. Uh, you can find the first, the Atheist Experience fan group at tiny.cc slash FBAXP. And there is also the Atheist Experience private fan group. That's right, where you don't have to interact so publicly. Those things won't appear on your public feed. Tiny.cc slash FBAXPPR. And there is a new group. The Atheist Experience fan group, Atheist vs. Theist Debates. That's right. You can go hang out with some theists and atheists alike and sort out your arguments and try them out. You can find that tiny.cc slash AXP fan debates. We make it easy for you, folks. You, you have no excuses at this point. Um, that being said, uh, okay. I don't know. There's a couple. Do, do you have one that's jumping out of you? If yeah, not, let's talk to Carol in Europe has evidence for heaven and hell. I like that. I want to, I want to know about this. Uh, Carol, he, him over in Europe. What, uh, what do you have for us today? Uh, hello. Uh, nice to hear you guys. Yeah. Um, I am uh, calling here because I think I have a really good argument for the existence of heaven and hell. But as I want to say, it's only argument, it's not a real evidence, so it's not like 100%. But I would say that this argument is so good that the chance of heaven and hell being real is way more than 50%. Can I, can I stop you just real quick, Carol? Because I want, I want to make sure that you and I are on the same page here. To me, what it sounded like mm -hmm. you just said is that you're going to give us an, an argument here for heaven and hell, that isn't 100%, but is pretty darn good. But it sounded like you admitted that yeah. if there was evidence, if there was some type of physical evidence to back it up, it would make it better. Is that, are we on the same page there? Oh, oh yeah, that makes sense. Okay, cool. Yeah, what's the argument? Okay, uh, first my argument uh, depends on uh, several conditions. So if these conditions are not true, then heaven on how my my not but this still might be real but uh, if uh, all the conditions are true then uh, then I would then it means that heaven and hell are real then so the percentage then depends on those conditions so if it will be okay I would ask you that uh, I would go with you to all these conditions and if you would agree with me if you how many conditions how many conditions are there Carol? Just, just for time's sake, we want to make sure we, we get to as I, many I as possible. Like three or four conditions. Okay, let's yeah, go, get, give it to me quick. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Your so, top three, give us your top three conditions. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Yeah. Uh, uh, they are time dependent. So I have to go, I have to first take the first one is that humanity will survive into the future. And we will survive for long enough to colonize the universe and the galaxy. So, would you agree with me that that this is something that's likely to happen? Mm, I don't know how exactly you put a statistic on that. I'm just going to be honest. I don't know how exactly you put a probability on whether or not humans will be around 500,000 years from now. But like, 
I, I mean, maybe I think if we live for another 500,000 years, we'll probably make it to Mars eventually. But I, I don't know how we put a 70, that's, 30 or 50, 50 on that. That's right? a pretty strong conjecture, but yeah. go ahead. What, yeah, but yeah, keep going, Carol. What, but what, but what, is, what is your personal opinion? Do you think this is something that's more likely than 50%? I, I don't know that I have a, an opinion on it because I don't feel like I have enough information yeah. either way. I, I I'm just... not I'm not interested in playing that game. Just you know, yeah. I, I don't want to put a percentage on something that's yeah. just highly conjectural okay, like okay, that. I, I will move on. Know. I, I will move yeah. on to another condition. Uh, if we assume that this will happen and humanity will really survive and we will colonize the universe, then humanity will probably not uh, go extinct since we will be living on multiple planets. And we will live for millions and billions of years. And the other condition is that if we will live for the million and billions, billions of years, we will develop some really incredible technology. Uh, you could uh, uh, agree with me or not that uh, the technology uh, that I'm talking about specifically would be a technology. So again, there's there's some there's some really. Yes. Hang on just a second. Hang on just a second, Carol. There's 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 a couple of things that like I think on a really basic intuitive level, yeah, I think most people are going to be like, "Well, look at all the cool stuff humans have done so far. Give us another insert amount of time here and and we'll probably do even cooler stuff." Um, yeah, I guess probably maybe. Uh, but again, I I just don't know that we have anything whatsoever to really help us decide how likely that is right but also and this is just and please evolutionary biologists correct me out there there aren't many species that seem to live around for like five billion years right like humans seem to have only been around as a species for like a quarter of a million right like 250k at most um if we make it another million years like we may not be people anymore. Like we may not be humans. We may be something totally different that still, you know, maybe has five oh, fingers oh, and I, toes I, I, I or whatever. But I, 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 I completely agree with that. that they might evolve into something okay. else. But even if we do, still, I think my condition would uh, still qualify for these two parts. Even if we evolve into something more and something else. Again, I, I think at the at like the most basic level of intuition, I think most people are going to say, based on what we've looked around and we've done in our short lifetimes, it seems likely that as as human beings live on, the technology will become more and more cool unless we just have some major catastrophe that reverts us back. But I, I don't know that that, again, I, I don't think there's any way to put a number on that. And I don't know that that conclusion is even that valuable. I, I don't know that that's anything more than just the actual mundane existence of life. Yeah, I guess maybe maybe cut to the chase. Problems. Yeah, yeah. What's... Cut, Carol, cut to the chase. Seems like you're trying to develop several conditions that will force us to say that, yeah, you're right. It must be the only conclusion we could come to is that there's a heaven and hell. So I guess yeah. cut, to, cut to the chase. What, do, what is your basic premise here? Okay. Uh, okay, uh, my basic premise is that the technology that future humans will develop and if they will have millions and billions yet to do the technology, uh, will be technology to scan human brains, scan human consciousness, and put put us into some uh, any kind of virtual reality they would want to. And another technology that they might develop in such a really long time could be technology to look into the past and see our... Uh, see their ancestors see us and they could see any uh, living person that they ever could and if they wanted to they had a, they mm -hmm. had the op opportunity to copy our consciousness from the past and put our consciousness into the future into any simulated reality that they could develop and carol i think this okay. is Probably carol hang on just a sec i think this is a really don't get me wrong. I, I think this is something, hey, you and I sit down with a pint and and chit chat about this till the wee hours of the morning. Um, I'm I'm all for that. And and hey, if if you wrote look, if you wrote a graphic novel on this, I'd probably read it. Sounds like um, a great movie. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. A very interesting, a very interesting thought for sure. But again, we're at the point now in 
in this kind of argument from you where it feels like there's already so much stuff that we have problems with and we yeah. don't really have a good way of determining which one is more likely. And so at this point, it's kind of like, well, yeah, I guess if we grant the thing of like human beings live for another billion years and if we grant the thing of like, like human beings are going to colonize like every rock on in the galaxy or whatever. And, and if all these other fantastical things happen, well, then probably like heaven and hell and God. And to me, that's, that's just yeah, like, that's that, huge. Yeah, that's a that's huge a, leap. Right. Even with all those other leaps in between, that one is still a pretty See, big one. The thing, the thing about your call, the call note here is you think you have evidence of heaven and hell. What you've given us is a bunch of conjecture which says this could happen and this could happen and i think this will happen and if this happens then this could be true that is a far leap from anything remotely like evidence yeah and i and i think that we've it, it sounds almost as if where where you were at the end there in terms of getting to what what your conception of of heaven and hell is it's it's very very far removed from the the vast majority of believers whether Christian or former Christian or Muslim or Hindu, like so, it, well, it's far away from that in really, such an really far removed from what people believe in, because whatever people believe in right now, they can make it into the reality. They believe in a Christian, Muslim God, whatever, and they might. But make it into but that reality. what you're saying is that what you're saying is that by like by a bunch of people just creating a virtual simulation that they're pretty sure is what heaven is like that means heaven's real and that's just not that's not right that isn't how we do stuff when it comes to actually understanding what is true about the world around us you don't you don't get to say that if if we stack all of these you know invisible non-material ghost blocks is blocks together we can build a ghost skyscraper and if we build a ghost skyscraper then we can put you know a, a unicorn helicopter uh, on the top like you don't you don't get to do that right like as much as as fun as it is to go through all of that and say wow what would that be like it, it isn't we're we're granting when we're doing that yeah, yeah. We're saying that that isn't yeah. the world that we live in already, you know? Uh, yes, but but my argument is that, uh, yes, I'm talking maybe about possibilities in the future, but the implication for us is that if it's possibility in the future, for us, it will be actual reality. If you will die right now and your consciousness will die right now, you might immediately wake up into the future that I just described. And for you, it's right, but we we uh, might also immediately wake up on the tip of a unicorn's horn as it flies through space and and farts bubbles, right? Carol, like, you're, like... you're you're just you're just throwing out a bunch of maybes yeah. and mites, and this yeah. could happen and that could happen, and it's just it's a science fiction movie, and let's just call it what it is. But it is not evidence. And Carol, we on this show are interested in talking about things that are that have to do with evidence and proof. And what you've given us is anything but that. Yeah. So I appreciate the call, and it's interesting to talk about. And we could all sit here and, like Secular said, we could have some drinks and talk about this into the night yeah, and, and fantasize about some world that we want to create in our minds. But it is not evidence of heaven or hell. So mm -hmm. I'm sorry. I appreciate the call. I mean, it was, it was fun talking to you, but we're going to probably move on to some other calls we have. Yeah, we appreciate it, Carol. And, um, you know, Go go hang out um, in the atheist theist debate. You know the the fan run group. I mean, please and and cut your teeth some more and and come up with some stuff. You know, I, I I'm not saying anything is or isn't possible a thousand years from now, but if we're saying it's a thousand years from now before we get that evidence, well, that definitely really does not concern me. That has nothing to do with right here and now or yeah. anybody, and, and it's yeah. just a bunch of crazy ideas. I mean, I'm sorry, I've got. I've got no time for those conversations. I'm sorry. That's, I, I just, get you. I, I just get don't. You. Well, for everybody out there, uh, did you know that the ACA actually hosts a handful of awesome shows other than just the atheist experience? You've got the nonprofit, secular sexuality, truth wanted, and talk heathen. And if you didn't catch those shows last week, here's a taste of what you what you missed. <laughs> At the same time, I know for myself, 
Like I cannot get certain worship songs out of my head. And at 2 a.m., <laughs> that can be a more perverse torture than oh. any fear I could possibly conjure. There are numerous verses talking about the inferiority of women compared to yeah. men. Uh, there's a verse right now I'm looking at. The men are worth 50 shekels of silver while women are worth only 30. We, we equally need to look at the way the Bible is interpreted and practiced. Other medical professionals and health experts, they're the ones who've invested the time, the study, into actually getting, wait for it, wait for it, because this is very important, facts. Mm. And I know that's a dirty <laughs> word to some people. Mm. Dirty I don't think word. you can say that on YouTube. You can go to any local community college, spend a couple bucks, you can take a course on linguistics and learn about how languages have developed. And it has nothing to do with the Tower of Babel, which is a, it's a fairy tale, my friend. Okay, thank you guys for your time. You have a uh, very uh, blessed, uh, or let me see, I, I'm sorry, I gotta watch my life. You can just say good, have a good day. <laughs> you know, don't trigger me, Jeffrey, I'll go off the rails. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get real emotional. <laughs> have a woman, penis, I, I win, goodbye. Well. How weak and vapid of an argument do you have to have to just scream I win and hang up? <laughs> that's that's kind of rough, yo. That's incredibly reductionist. And, and it's like saying that a woman is just a thing that can have babies. It's really anti-feminist and pretty gross. So just, sorry, that's not how anything works, dude. Team Forest, hashtag Team Forest. I yeah. win, so end the show. <laughs>
And um, hang, ooh, hang on just a second, Nikki. It, hang on just a second, Nikki. It sounded to me like you said that you had other methods of coming to truth other than like scientific means. What what would well, those be? When I was in it. When I was an atheist, I only had science, right? So, but okay. there are other things that we know that witness to truth. Like logic, what? Reason. Logic. Mm -hmm. Logic, reason. Philosophy. Aren't those kind of foundational for science? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, so logic is the foundation for science, right? So, sure. without logic, science does not work. And so, we we make conclusions in science based on logic, and sometimes, you know. We get it wrong. We've had theories sure. change, right? I mean, we've had uh, theoretical well, that's, changes since. Yeah, science. that's all true. Let me let me jump in here, Nikki. What what yeah. just give us an example of of, of what were some of the arguments, yeah. these reasonable arguments that some of these Christians had that persuaded you? Yeah, for sure. No, there were, there there were none. I, I didn't I didn't listen to Christians. I had to do research because most of the Christians, unfortunately, that I talked to had no freaking clue I would ask what did you research them, nikki okay, what was the research that you yeah did what what did you research I, I, would, to... I would ask them about quantum physics i would ask them about how do you i mean how how could this and i was i was raised jewish so they would say you know he fulfills the jewish laws and i'm like okay uh that doesn't make any sense to me scripture is complete the s is completely convoluted it doesn't make any sense which is actually what scripture says but those who are perishing don't understand it. It's foolishness to them. So I was okay. like, what, what, you know, so you mentioned, Nikki, you mentioned quantum physics for a second. Hang, hang on, Nikki. Cause we, we want to, we want to try and focus this as, as best Nikki, as we possibly. Hey, Nikki, 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 hang on. Nikki, 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 slow yeah. down, slow down, slow down, slow down. Yeah. Cause we, we want to, we want to ask you some questions that kind of get to the crux of the matter here. Cause it seems like we're kind of wandering all over the road here. Yeah. So let me just, let me just bring it down to what the crux of the matter is you let me ask you what do you what do you believe about god now mm -hmm. and why let's just what focus on that okay yeah. i believe that god exists and sadly he does and why do i believe it because i've done a lot of research and it okay just, okay you know you tell us what give us a give it give us an example of the research that you've done Nikki. Yeah. what is it that has convinced you of this existence of God. Okay, let me let me say this. You guys want the evidence and you and you want to follow the pattern, but it's not it's not just one piece of evidence. You have to change your that's, mind and say that's, maybe I'm okay. wrong about this, right? So, yeah. Hang, hang on, hang on, hang on, Nikki. That's that's okay, but I want I want you to understand that we're we're not we don't want to have a conversation where the only way that Dave and I come to truth is just by accepting the thing that the person is claiming to begin with. If, if yeah, I have to okay. just, if I have to just believe in God before we can find the research no. to prove God, then, no, then that's not, not hang on, just hang on, hang on just a second, Nikki. Hang on just a second. Okay. I, I apologize if I got contentious there. I'm not trying to, but I got you muted for just a second so I can finish this rant. I love to hear myself talk. Uh, and these, these speakers go, go right to my ears. But if, if you have research, if you have done something and you have looked into something and you have any bullet point of anything, any spreadsheet of anything that makes your needle move closer towards I believe in God. That's what we want. And and we understand that there may be a bunch of different pieces of evidence. We we get that. But if the first piece of evidence that you bring us just isn't well founded, well we can just throw that out and keep going to the rest of them. And that's that's how we want to do it. And and I think that's a little bit easier of a way for us to try to break it down. So I got you I got you back. So sorry for muting you. Um oh. So so what do you, what would you say is the research that you have done? Just give us the first bullet point. Okay. We'll take a look at that and we'll move on. No, from no, no, I can't. I, okay. The first bullet point was, okay, this is the thing with scientific method. This is what I had to make up my mind about. If I'm truly being scientific and if I say God does not exist, let's say that's my hypothesis, right? Okay. So when you do science, there's a null hypothesis. And so if I say God does not exist, what is the null hypothesis for that? That God could exist. 
So I have to keep that option open. And what I find is that if that is a possibility, which is what science does, then I have to research that. And so I began to look into, you know, which, which theory better fits the nature of reality, this claim of God or not. And I began to look into a lot of science. I began to look into archaeology. I began to look. What's into the biology. first piece of science that you looked into, Nikki? That's to what we're trying to get at. Science. What's What's the bullet point? Okay. What's the bullet point of science you're that in, you looked you're at? Not me, sorry, Nikki, you're not letting me finish. Nikki, hang on, hang on. N- Nikki, I feel we're like, trying. We're yeah. trying to get you to focus on mm-hmm. one mm-hmm. thing. Tell right. us one thing that you researched that led you to believe in the existence of God. Focus on one thing, Nikki. I think Dave and I get the overarching picture decently enough to keep going on with the conversation. But where we're getting hung up right now is you keep saying, well, I've got this thing back here in a journal that I looked up and it's really good evidence, but you're not telling us what that is. So just 30 seconds should be more than enough time for you to just say, Here's the first thing that I found. Like, I ran around for 30 minutes and I felt God inside me. Like, that's the, okay? So you're Give back on. one thing. One, one thing. thing. What, I, what is it? Okay. You didn't have just one thing and you won't have one thing. It's a cumulative case. So let me just state that in the beginning. So the first very, the very first thing that I personally looked up was the Big Bang. And then okay. I looked up the research on that but let me just say that it is a cumulative case across that, that's fine but let's talk about the big bang let me can i please finish nikki please. nikki nikki you do nikki i hate pushing this button i have this <laughs> button and it says mute and then it says unmute after i push it the first time and i can just i can just sit here and just push it all damn day i don't want to do that but I don't know if if you know, but I also have other calls. I have I have other people that have really good topics that we want to get to, okay? And what what we're trying to do is go through point by point and actually look at these things. We're not just trying to hand wave them away and say, "Well, Big Bang science." Meh. We really want to talk about them. And if you're saying that one of the first things that brought you into believing that God is real was looking into research of the Big Bang, awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Let's talk about that research and actually see if it gets us to the conclusion that you want to get to. We understand it's a cumulative case. We get it. There are lots of things that all get stacked up together and make this beautiful. We get all of that. Let's look at the one puzzle piece and make sure it fits. So Only that. Big Bang. Big Bang. Go. What about the Big Bang? Made you feel as if that was closer towards making you believe in God? What was it about the Big Bang? Well, was it the microwave background radiation? Go ahead. What? No. So I just, I mean, it's a very simple thing. The first, the first idea that I had, and you, and you guys know this, is that, you know, something can't come from nothing. And then we have the multiverse, right? And so it's just kind of an extrapolation that moves the point back. So that was the, fir- the very first thing I had to consider. And okay. Consider- well, hang on, hang on, hang on right there. Cause I hang on just a second, just a second, Nikki. Cause I just got something I'll just throw at you real quick, which is sure. what if something, what if something just always existed? What if there just was something yeah. constantly You're talking stable state? You're talking stable state like Aristotle. So, uh, um, that I mean, not exactly, that but that's okay. Up until still work. We, 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 we thought that was true. And then we discovered that time and matter and space had a beginning so it wasn't eternal so okay but that beginning that beginning isn't necessarily the beginning of everything it's the beginning of the local presentation that we understand as the universe right sure, sure but what if, what if okay. it was god what if god was eternal what what but, if it wasn't yeah and so Mi- that's nikki to your point something can't come from nothing where did god come from i mean the mm. the people that make that argument god, that say god is eternal God, no, well, why says, not the universe? Why says, not just the universe? Is you eternal? can't, Nikki, you can't start with the premise. Nikki, Nikki, let me talk. Nikki, let me talk. You can't start with the premise that God is eternal. Who said God's eternal? 
Mm. You can't just start from there. That's not the starting place. So when you say something can't come from nothing, it presupposes that God came from nothing. And that's not fair. You don't get to make that assumption. That's not a starting place. So if something can't come from nothing, that also implies that God can't come from nothing. Mm -hmm. You don't get to True. take him out of the equation. Exactly. Can I answer? Sure. Can I answer now? Please. Okay. So if we're saying that the universe is eternal, then that kind of violates the law of thermodynamics, right? So we have a natural system, multiverses, whatever, but they can't create themselves. Nature can't give birth to itself. But something that is eternal beyond time, space, and matter can create it. And so why what why does saying? God get to be Wait, beyond time, space, and matter? Finish, oh my goodness. Let me finish my Nikki, again, this button that I don't like pushing, that I can just push all day. I don't want to do this. I want to have a conversation. And when we have a conversation, we have to go back and forth. And you have to respond to things that Dave is saying. If Dave brings up something, which he didn't say these words, but what Dave was talking about is the special pleading fallacy, where you say everything fits in this little box right here except for the thing that I want to not fit in the box. You're saying nothing can be eternal. Well, of course, God can, but nothing can be eternal. It's a big problem, but God can. That was what Dave was pushing back on. And, and that, that's why he had to say that right there, because if you just continued on for another 10 minutes, well, we wouldn't get to more calls and, and we would have to go back to that. So let's, let's actually have a back and forth Let's actually try to try to engage with each other, okay? So what Dave was saying, You're what Dave was saying, finish my thought, sir. and I'm not going to. Yeah, I think I'm not we're done going with Nikki. to. I think we're done with Nikki. I, she I'm, won't listen. Yeah, and and I, and that frustrates me because mm -hmm. I, I really feel like we were starting to make some progress. And the problem is, Dave, if I'm telling you directions, if I say, "Hey, man, here's how you get to the." The local gas station and i say well the first thing you do is you hop on a donkey that has wings and can fly why the hell would you let me tell you where to take a left yeah like why would you why would you wait you'd be there like there are no well, donkeys with wings that fly they can't do that rarely so, what what's yeah. up <laughs> so it's frustrating she she won't listen and that's she's okay. that's okay yeah Ugh. but real quick let me let everybody know about some awesome awesome things that you can get i don't know if you like merch dave but i love merch and there is a brand new store. So visit tiny.cc slash merch, A-C-A, and you can get all your favorite items like a t-shirt, a hoodie, a coffee mug. You got beanies, cell phone cases, tote bags, all kinds of incredible things. And I have heard that there is even a limited edition special feature item every month. So make sure to go check out our store and all the stores of the other awesome shows because there are some really cool things. Also, by the way, right below the chat, you'll notice there is a Donate Now box. Donations made there will go directly to the ACA. 100% of the proceeds go directly to the ACA. They do not pass go. And most importantly, YouTube, YouTube does not take a cut. So that is really nice, and that is a really easy way to, to help support us. So, And then just finally, real quick, I got to say this because they, they work so darn hard, Dave. Darn uh, can hard. We, can we get the crew cam up just for a second? Those guys are Ooh, awesome. They are some wonderful guys. people constantly working, constantly making things happen. Um, and yeah, without without them, none of this stuff happens. So That's right. Awesome. What do you think? I'm thinking, well, did I, I picked last time, Dave. I think Vincent, it's Vincent's been on a while. We're going to talk Vincent. about conscious. That's what I was thinking. Vincent, he, him in Utah. Hey, it sounds like you got something uh, something to talk with us about, about uh, consciousness maybe? or, or... Yeah, yeah. So it, it's yeah, what you got? Um, it, so to preface this, um, I, I am agnostic and something that I had a debate with someone about a little while ago that hasn't left my head is as humans, we interact with consciousness in a different sense than other animals so maybe would that be a byproduct of logistical evolution or would that be a byproduct of god and that was the question handed to me and i was i was stumped 
and growing up yeah. in a very religious state, I and I, I just I just never came up with an answer. Yeah. Um, so again, I just absolutely have to remind everybody this all the time, which is I am not like I'm not medically trained. I don't know. No, I don't. Me neither. You know. Um, but when it comes to the consciousness of other living creatures, it seems to be the case that humans have just a little bit of a different flavor. Um, but as we continue to investigate, it seems to not be as different anymore, right? Mm -hmm. um, we've made some pretty good advances when it comes to, to understanding like dolphins and, and horses and, and certain breeds of dogs and stuff. Yeah. Um, have, have you seen, out of total random curiosity, have you ever seen, Vincent, what a shark brain looks like compared to a dolphin's brain? Uh, no, I have not, actually. The dolphin's brain is surprisingly closer uh, to a human shape than you would think to begin with. Like, it's not a human brain. You can tell that it is not a human brain. But there are some, some very basic fundamental structures about that brain that are noticeable right away. And it could just be the case that that totally just these these funky little cells that sometimes like shoot electricity at each other. That's not exactly right, you know, but it, those those neurons in our brain could just organize in a certain way and cause us to actually start feeling the way we do about our personhood and so forth. Mm -hmm. And there may be nothing else other than that, right? Just dolphins just took a different route for whatever reason maybe because they were around water more often and yeah. our chimp ancestors were hanging out in the trees like i don't know right um but yeah i mean i guess how do we know it's not a byproduct of god 100 percent? yeah i guess we don't fucking know like i guess we don't it just seems that we have more indication that it is something that naturally arises from a living creature just trying to experience the world around it right mm-hmm and I think we're learning more. Let me jump in, Vincent, for a minute. I think we're learning more about the brain and how it works all the time. And to Secular's point, some of the animals seem to have more consciousness of their awareness or things around them than others do. So if that were a byproduct of God, why would he be choosing some animals to benefit from that and others not? You know, why, why is the snail just a shit out of luck? You know, you're just crawling on the ground. You don't get to experience anything. That's a why, good question. Why, why is God choosing some animals to bestow this wonderful consciousness on and not others? That, that, that this makes no sense on its surface. Yeah. So, and, and the second, secondarily, if, if it is, I mean, when we, when we get to these things that we don't have good understanding of, the, the Christian default is to just go, God, mm. you know, it's the old God of the gaps. So if we don't understand something, Let's just plug God into that and make him the reason for it. And that's just such a lazy conclusion to come to, yeah. in my opinion. Yeah, let's let's leave it at, hey, we honestly don't freaking know. And right. because that's kind of motivating to go figure out what the hell it is, right? Like, hey, that's we don't why, know where it comes from. Let's go look. That's that's why science is what it is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What's that? Go ahead, Vincent. One hundred and ten percent agree with that. The, the 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 reason the reason that I'm still agnostic is because of these really weird, tiny questions that are just: Do we know? Does anyone out there know? And I've listened to this podcast a few times, and I'm just like, these guys know a lot, so maybe they got a, somewhere that I can. Well, Dave, well, Dave knows a lot. I know uh, slightly no, here's, less than that. Here's but. I just I've lived longer, so I've learned more things. But I'm going to be the first to tell you. First of all, I think we are all agnostic. The agnostic just simply means we don't know. And I think the best thing we can often respond to any question with is, I don't know, but I want to find out. I want to find out the answer. I want to know the truth. What, where we get lazy is when we say, I don't know, therefore, let me make up an answer. Right. Because I'd rather have an answer than not have one. And that's the seduction of certainty. And Christianity, uh, evangelicalism, fundamentalism uh, thrives on certainty. And when you when you delve in the realm of uncertainty and questions that we don't have answers for, it's lazy and not very convincing to just make up an answer. And I think that's what religion has done. So when we get to these places where we're still discovering things and we don't know the answer, I think that the only honest conclusion we can come to is to say, I don't know. And I'm, I'm going to be the first. To, I mean, I'm not going to sit here and tell you I know that there's no God. 
that's that's again certainty i do not like certainty of any kind i will say i don't think there is i don't see any good evidence for one and people keep trying to show me evidence and i still keep coming up with this thing of well nope that's not good enough um so that's just kind of where i land on things we don't know so i'm going to try to i'm going to try to park in the places where the most evidence gives me the best answer yeah and and i i couldn't possibly agree more or add anything on to that dave because i just think that's great unfortunately vincent uh vincent did oh, drop. Lost it. Okay. yeah we just had a little problem but that's okay uh because we do have some other people on there and again i i think that's always an important sentiment that needs to be expressed we we it's it's totally totally okay if we if we we're not don't claiming know. yeah we're not claiming that we know these things that's right. the problem um we're we're coming we're, we're pushing back against theists who claim to know certain things and we're saying yeah. no i don't see that you, you have enough evidence to claim to know that thing yeah well i will say uh our next caller anto he him in italy seems to have some evidence it sounds like you have some really interesting videos for us today uh what you got for us anto and did i say that hi. correctly hi uh, hi guys hi I'm very excited. It's the first time uh, I call uh, this show. Uh, I know it's just from uh, a couple of months. Uh, well, we're okay. glad to have you. We appreciate you calling. So what uh, what have you got for us? It says you've got some cool videos or something. Um, look, if I uh, can, uh, I don't know if this is show, uh, if uh, I can uh, link something on the live, uh, on the live. You won't uh, you won't be able to link it uh, in the uh, chat most likely, and you won't be able to to play it I on air. But I didn't, uh, there's know how to put uh, those uh, videos. So, uh, there's a there's a, there's a fan to, Facebook. Hang on just a second, Anto. Hang on just a second. There's fan Facebook, uh -huh. fan run discords. Okay. Go hang out there. I think I think there are places that 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 can be done. Just to answer that, but you've got this video. What does this video show? Um, uh, no, I seen um, a video uh, where. Uh, it's um, exactly. It's not uh, only one video. It's uh, uh, a bunch of videos of people flying. Uh, that seems flying. Uh, I don't. I don't know. Uh, but uh, the most uh, important uh, uh, video that that uh, uh, I can indicate to you uh, is uh, um, the one uh, a clip from. Uh, uh, a performance uh, from uh, a guy named uh, Special Head. I don't know if you ever ever heard of him. Uh, and uh, he uh, it's a performance on America's Got Talent. Uh, okay. He uh, he stands. Uh, he claims to be a magician and that can levitate. And he stands uh, on uh, a wand. It, 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 it does the trick of the wand. It seems to so, do the trick of so the... So real quick, hang on. Let me let me kind of interrupt just to, just to clarify, just to make sure we're all on the same page. It sounds like what you're saying is you watched a human being levitate on a televised show with lots of money behind the scenes for things like stage and, and costumes and, and lighting. And the, the person that, that did this particular feat told people from the beginning i can't actually do this but i'm one of those groups of people who spend a really really long time making it look like i can and you're saying that that is is good good evidence of of the metaphysical is that are we on the same page well, well i define uh, the look i define uh, the metaphysical uh, uh, for um in Things that uh, we cannot uh, reach uh, with our senses and uh, can uh, interact with the atoms, uh, with the atoms, or maybe uh, more, uh, or maybe also with uh, uh, the subatomic particles. In but a did, way but did you did you watch? You watched the video, right? You saw it with your eyes, yes, I, part I of your senses, video. and you heard it video, with your ears, but... your senses. So if, if the metaphysical is something that we can't interact with with our senses, then how did you see this video of this person doing this metaphysical thing? Is that am I am I off base there? No, it, or 
no, uh, um, a person that a human being uh, um, a bunch of uh, a bunch of uh, this uh, a monkey uh, this monkey a bunch of beans, uh, a, a bunch of molecules that flies uh, for with uh, with uh, no nothing uh, with uh, uh, just uh, spontaneously so, uh, with no chemical reaction that uh, helicopters or uh, aeroplanes use uh, to fly uh, maybe if the there is something that interacts with the with the atoms of uh, this particular system that system uh, that is the human being that uh, we are not uh, able we are not have been able to reach uh, to okay uh, so uh, so hang on anto anto i don't know how much of of this particular uh show you've watched um but a good couple of times dave and i have kind of had this like general theme of like hey sometimes there are things we don't have good answers for and it's probably better to just say we don't know rather than inserting a conclusion and then making other decisions based on that do you do you feel like do you feel like right now you're you're kind of doing that i know that's a leading question that i just gave to you there but it kind of sounds like to me what you're saying is uh quantum physics and those little tiny parts of atoms we're pretty sure exist they're funky funky and we don't know some things and that could be a reason to accept all of these other claims that we don't seem to have good evidence for that that's what it sounds like to me and i'm not saying that there aren't cool things with the large hadron collider of course there are but i don't think we can say well because we don't know enough about electron orbitals that must equal spirits and gods and and unicorns does that make sense or well, uh, I don't want to reach a conclusion. I don't want to claim that I know uh, how the the uh, supposed uh, spiritual uh, world uh, works. I just, uh, I'm just uh, very frustrated because I saw this uh, thing that uh, bra breaks the laws of physics in uh, a very anthropocentric way, and I don't like it. And uh, uh, since, uh, you don't like it, you don't like knowing uh, the answer, not knowing the answer. Mm, yeah. Mm. Let me interject. I, I, I like to go behind what we're saying to, to ask the question why? Because I think that gets to the core of a lot of things that we don't like to talk about. And so if you see videos of people doing something that you don't think the laws of nature should allow them to do, then you, you get frustrated because you don't have an answer for that. And I understand that because we we like to have we talked about it with the, with the previous caller. We like to have certainty about things. We like to know things. We like to feel certain about the world we're living in because the unexplained things, yeah, the unanswered exactly. questions, they le they leave us feeling uncertain and a little bit a little bit scared. If I don't have an answer for that, then I'm feeling a little uncertain. But I want to say to you that's okay. You don't have to make up an answer for something that you don't understand just so you'll feel better about it. That's the lazy conclusion to come to. And I'm not saying you've done that, Anto. But what I want to say is I've seen these I've seen these claims before about people levitating or ghosts or spirits or this thing moved across the room. And every time, and I want to say every time, the video is grainy, yeah. it's vague, it's shadowy, it's not clear. And I want to I want to ask the question, why? Are these videos always so vague in this day and age of everyone carrying a high quality video in their pocket? Every mm -hmm. phone now has a video, and yeah. yet we can't we can't get any better videos of these mysterious things than yeah. we had 50 years ago with the Loch Ness monster and Bigfoot. Yeah. We still have these grainy, shadowy, vague videos that no one can really conclusively point to. If there were proof of the metaphysical world, I think we would have a pretty clear video and it would probably be on 60 minutes and the whole world would know about it. Yeah, but we'd yet, be doing it in hospitals already. Exactly. Right? Yet we still are dealing in these vague, shadowy, figury worlds. And then everybody's mm -hmm. jumping to these conclusions. Well, there must be more out there. There must be ghosts because we want to have answers for questions that we don't understand. Yeah, when I see something that I that doesn't make sense to me, yeah, I kind of want to go, well, I know what that is. But the safer thing to say, even if it's not 
it doesn't feel good is to say, I don't know what that is, right. but you know what? I bet if I hang around long enough, there'll be an answer that'll present itself. Mm -hmm. So I don't need to make one up today. Yes. What? What so, do you think? Give us what, what do you what do you think about what Dave just said? Give us give us a quick thirty seconds. We've got we're we're coming up close to the end. We got a couple of calls. Hopefully we can get to them. But okay. give us give us a quick thirty seconds here, Anto. Okay, um, no, I, I I agree that uh, it, this is uh, the web. It's a very sensation. Can be a very sensational place, uh, place when. Uh, uh, charlatans uh, can trick you with uh, oh this uh, there was a ghost in this window see a ghost orb um, and uh, the night uh, they uh, they are mostly fake uh, and the last uh, and the last uh, percentual are uh, uh, camera here ca camera heroes but um, i'm sorry camera heroes sorry my uh, shitty english you're good. You're doing um, just fine. Trust me. <laughs> okay, uh, but uh, this uh, uh, those uh, category of uh, those videos uh, uh, of uh, people uh, levitating that you you can find on YouTube, and sure. also this um, the performance of, of this uh, uh, special head, this uh, uh, supposed mag the magician. Uh, uh, that uh, appeared in uh, America's Got Talent. Uh, well, well, Anto, let me uh, let me just let me just say to kind of kind of wrap us up so that we can move on. Um, I think Dave said something just a second ago that was really really good, which is when when he has gone to investigate these videos, these these claims, no matter how amazing they are, no matter where they are, when other people have gone to investigate these claims time and time again it seems to be the case we come up empty and i th i think i think that's okay because maybe it means that something crazy awesome super duper cool fancy happened and we just don't have an explanation yet um i think hang out with us again uh maybe yeah. uh maybe try giving um truth wanted a call they love a lot of levitating and and ghosts and bigfoot and stuff um but thank you so much anto for hanging out with yeah. us today we're going to we're going to let you go and try to grab one or two more here yeah. at the end do you do you have a preference dave between the the last couple um, what do you think you know I, we got i know we got the guy yelling at us about us wanting to have sex with no consequences that's but true. i, I kind of know where that's gonna go yeah yeah, yeah. so um I'm, i don't know I, it, what do you what do you, you pick what about what about an explanation uh for god that has to be eternal let's sure. let's talk with adam he him in india hey how's it going adam adam are you there if not that's okay because we have other people as well um and it looks like we have Timothy is an atheist. He, him, giving us a call and wants to tell us that science does not prove anything. How are you, Timothy? I'm fine. Thanks for taking my call. Yeah, thanks for hanging out with uh, Dave and myself. What uh, what would you like to talk about? Well, I'm really glad that uh, this call got taken later in the show because all the preceding calls really dovetail neatly with my concept there. <laughs> um, sure. Secular reality, I really never seen you before. You do a great job. I love your calming voice. Thank you. And Dave, Appreciate that. you're a credit with your calm resolve, <laughs> always. Yeah, well, um, I'm not always calm, but I fake it pretty well. <laughs> well, when pushed, you're still firm. I, I like that. So you guys are doing a great <laughs> job. And this is what I'm talking about is, frankly, scientific outreach. Uh, I've discovered in my own career as a scientist that inclusiveness, what you're trying to do here in discussion and dialogue, is where you begin to maybe have a chance to change minds. But I think as scientists, we do a disservice to the non-science, uh, perhaps the science deniers, to talk about the reality of accepting evidence. Uh, I, I am not capable technically of accepting the discussion in the Big Bang Theory or the Big Stretch Theory, which is the difference between Sir Roger Penrose and Stephen Hawking's view of the Big Bang. Uh, mm -hmm. I, it's beyond my training. And what I really do now is trust that the evidence that they have presented has been subjected to the scientific method as rigorously as it's applied everywhere I have been. So 
it gets to the point that we don't prove anything. All of us have left with accepting or rejecting the evidence. And right. that we need to talk more to people about that because they like to inject belief as a scientific premise when it's really trust that this underlying paradigm, the scientific method, is what protects us from our own worst biases and notions. And if I could just kind of tack on, and please, uh, Timothy, if, if you have more training in science, uh, which you probably do if you have any training in science, you have more than me, but um, it, there, there's always that problem of underdetermination, right? Where there always could be another option that right. actually answers the question. But what do we have more evidence pointing us towards? What do we have that rules out other potential options and that i think that's kind of where you were going with it is that we we get to a place where like me personally can't sit down and like try to you know break apart hawking's stuff on on black holes like i can't do that um but we do have some good reason to believe that hey black holes are probably causing this weird little fluctuation at this part of the galaxy uh could be anything else uh, but we have more evidence for black holes than we do a pixie that, I don't know, is bored and punching holes in the universe, right? I'm evidence as that. opposed to no evidence. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. I agree with you guys wholeheartedly in that. Um, the word certainty came up consistently in all the phone calls that preceded, and I liked listening to them because I wanted to change what I wanted to talk about with every <laughs> preceding caller. I'm sure that's part of the problem of doing what you guys do, but... If the Jesuits ever got anything right, it's that teaching that the opposite of faith is not doubt, but certainty. And yeah. it's this search for certainty that is honestly, I think, so human in all of us. But yeah. we must include when we're talking to people about the fact that science is about never getting to say you're certain, never wanting to say you're certain, never having to say you're certain. Just to reiterate the love story, love means never having to say you're sorry, right? Yeah, uh, which dates the hell out of me, sadly. It's <laughs> all right. Well, isn't, it was a good... isn't, isn't it safe to say, Timothy, that science is not trying to prove things? It's merely examining the evidence to see what's most likely, correct? Yeah, and most likely is, of course, now uh, in the realm of I am a data scientist, statistician, geneticist, and cognitive scientist now. And mm. I study semantics quite a little bit in its relation to proof of cognition mechanics. And this is what it always comes down to, these labels, definitions, and why Matt Dillahunty is particularly uh, assiduous about what are we talking about, defining the terms so that the argument right. doesn't go off the rails immediately, which it often does anyway. Yeah. Uh, so these people that are calling you often with this science denier, well, you know, I have a little property I call the, uh, the science deniers no free lunch, free lunch wagon, where we get together and eat and break bread and get to know each other and then – a panel of scientists answer questions that have only to do with the evidence. What is the evidence you disagree with? Not what do you believe? What do you think? Tell me the evidence you disagree with in climate change, in natural right. selection, in the moonwalk, whatever it happens to be, and get people to realize quickly that we're willing to discuss evidence at any point because we know our evidence is always finite. It will soon be replaced by new evidence that supersedes exactly. right. that is still not near certainty. And, and see, that's that's the problem religion has when it bumps up against science is that religion starts with the answer and then goes about trying to prove why it's correct mm -hmm. rather than starting with the question and saying, let me get to the right answer. And religion, I think, especially the more fundamentalist brands, which is what, what I lived with and the water I swam in, but the, the more fundamentalist your ideas are in terms of religious and, and worldview, the more uh, opposed you are to new evidence because it but it 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 comes into conflict with the certainty conflict with the certainty that you need in order to sell your your uh, particular brand of faith it has there has to be certainty and when you when you come into conflict with that with questions that don't line up with that certainty that you've landed on then you've got a real dilemma Where, which direction do you go what do you go with and most people who are uh, indoctrinated in and heavily, and I did this for three and a half decades, it's just, you, you just have to dig deeper. You have to hang on to that because if you start allowing those questions to seep into your certainty, then it's going to unravel the whole thing, which is what happened with my deconstruction. Yeah. 
gets very complex in a human context, doesn't it? Because, of course, people are wrapped up in this with their identity. And I think always yeah. this, this argument about atheist, uh, agnostic, what is the semantics of it? What does it mean? Is there an agnostic atheist? It's all about identity because mostly people right. don't want to identify as an atheist are afraid of being sort of categorized in some way by other human beings as something that they're not. So what it really boils down to is feel good. And uh, the essence that if we can discuss these things, most of the time people walk away, not convinced that you're correct, but <laughs> they've now got a little wedge in their own certainty that makes yeah. them understand. That's the goal. None that's the goal is, to, is, to, is, fact, is that. Yeah. Yeah, that's the goal is to get people to think a little bit more about what what positions they're holding. And all of us do well to serve ourselves and others if we hold our certainty loosely or hold our ideas loosely. I have this idea about something, but I'm willing to be, I'm willing to be convinced of something else if you show me good reason to do so. That's it. And I think I, I have to say, I think that is a perfect, a perfect way to end uh, because we all need just a little bit less certainty on our conclusions. And and we need to go out and we need to look at these these freaking conclusions and, and try to find the one that has the most evidence and the one that best answers the data. So mm -hmm. Timothy, we, we unfortunately, we are at the end. Uh, we do have to wrap, but uh, thank you so much for for hanging out with us and giving Thanks us a call Thanks for today. hanging on so long. I know yeah. you're on call. Thanks, guys, for taking for me last. Really you bet. Yeah. Who preceded me? Thanks. <laughs> That's great. Thanks, it's buddy. almost it's almost like there was a divine plan from the beginning, Dave. Obviously, <laughs> there's no other answer for that. <laughs> Couldn't possibly. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I I had uh, an absolutely awesome time. Is is there anything you wanted to say before we we wrap up and let uh, let this wonderful crew go home? No, I think uh, I think we answered all of life's questions and everything's so. neatly wrapped. We can all go to heaven now. That's right. That's right. Um, and if you don't think that uh, we're correct on that, well, next Sunday, uh, four thirty p.m. Central Time, you can come tell whoever the hosts are then that they're wrong. Uh, but everyone, thank you so much for hanging out with us today. Uh, we had such a freaking good time. And remember to visit our website, atheist-community.org, for the latest on what's been happening. And feel free to contact us at tv at atheist-community.org. Dave, I had an absolutely awesome time. I hope we do it again soon. And uh, absolutely, we'll see y'all next time. It's time to get sexy, so watch Secular Sexuality live Thursdays at 7 p.m. Central. Visit tiny.cc slash YTSS and call into the show at 512-991-9242 or connect to the show online at tiny.cc slash call sex.